Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to reduce the firing temperature of a glaze from cone 10 to 6 and end up with a surprise. I will research glaze melting at digitalfire.com, talk about the differences between the two glaze types, boron sourcing and limits, watching thermal expansion when adding flux, and unlinking a recipe from the recipe database. To begin, I'll choose Digital Fire Reference Library from the Insight Help menu. On this page, I'll click Articles. That takes me here. A long list related to ceramic chemistry, mineralogy, and physical properties. Then I'll choose Find from the browser's Edit menu, in this case Firefox, and look for the words Firing Temperature. Notice Control F is the shortcut to find a word on a web page. This works in Internet Explorer also. This article, Reducing the Firing Temperature of a Glaze from Cone 10 to 6, says that boron is the magic oxide. Increasing its proportion is the best way to move glazes down a few cones. It discusses some of the side effects of adjusting melting temperature that I'll not cover here. I'll just demonstrate the mechanics of increasing boron since this is the most important. This article, a low-cost tester of melt fluidity, looks interesting. I'll click that. This is a very interesting article about a melt fluidity tester you can use to compare two glazes. It also has information about adjusting glaze melting temperature. Notice this picture. This is a comparison showing the same glaze formula. The one on the left sources MgO and CaO from a frit. The one on the right from talc and calcium carbonate. As you can see, melting temperature is more than just the chemistry. Fritz are a good idea for melting a glaze better. No question about it. To start, I'm going to open a target formula for cone 6 using this button above the formula list. I'll select the Roy Hesselberth one and click Open. Here it is. Then I want to open the 1214M cone 6 recipe that comes with Insight in recipe 1. I'll click here and enter enough of the name to limit the long list of glazes I have stored in InSight. I'll click the line and click Open. Next, I'll select Recipe 2 and open the 1947U Cone 10 recipe that comes with InSight. I'll enter enough of the name here to limit the long list, click the line and click Open. Now we have a Cone 6 formula on the left, a Cone 10 on the right, and a cone 6 target. Let's look closer. There's nothing really different about the fluxes, except the cone 10 has a little zinc. But zinc is common in glazes at all temperatures. The alumina and silica in the cone 10 glaze are higher, but notice in the target that cone 6 glazes can have alumina and silica as high as this cone 10 glaze. Of course, in general, cone 6 glazes have more fluxes and therefore less silica and alumina. The big difference is here, B203 or boron. Amazingly, many people use fritz and materials like comanite and gersley borate without ever knowing about this magic oxide that these materials contribute. It is a low expansion, low melting glass. That is exactly what we need to reduce the firing temperature of a cone 10 glaze. Without boron, we would have to try and do it with zinc, sodium and lithium. The other fluxing oxides don't melt at cone 6. But these three oxides have many issues. Sodium is high expansion. Zinc conflicts with many colors. Lithium can only be used in small amounts where it causes glaze defects. Plus, they just do not melt the way boron does. But look at this typical frit. It sources so many other oxides besides boron. If we add this to a glaze, is it not going to throw the chemistry completely out of whack? That is why there are so many kinds of frits. Look at the oxides our cone 10 glaze has. The frit does not contribute anything that is not already in the glaze. If I can use the amount of frit needed to give me a specific amount of boron, I should be able to adjust the other materials in my recipe to realign the other oxide amounts. But I'm going to use frit 3134 instead. It has fewer oxides, so it's simpler, more boron, and it's the one already in the cone 6 recipe I've opened. It also has no alumina. 
That will enable me to source AL203 from kaolin to suspend the glaze better. In a minute you're going to see why this frit is so popular. I've clicked Recipe 2, selected the frit line, and then clicked the Increment button to increase the amount two at a time until the B203 approximately matches the Cone 6 recipe. I can fine tune it in a minute. The frit is supplying Na2O 2 also, so I'm likely going to need to reduce the felspar. It was the major contributor. I'll do that in a minute. The next thing I've done is zero the amount of zinc in our former Cone 10 recipe using this button. Before going any further, we need to do something. I've clicked the Recipe Details tab. I'm editing the G1947U recipe. It is code number 232 in the database. If I click the Save button, I'm going to wipe out that recipe and replace it with this. Then I'll choose Duplicate Recipe in the File menu. This will remove the link between this recipe and the database record number 232. Now when I cl click the Save button, Insight will create a new database record and link this to it and save the recipe there. Next, I'll update these blanks, including the date. Mostly I removed information from the 1947U recipe. Then I'll click Save. Now, back at the formula, notice the oxides. There are only minor differences between our adjusted Cone 10 recipe and the Cone 6 one. I'll match up the KNAO by reducing the felspar, the AL203 by increasing the kaolin, and the SiO2 by reducing the silica. Now you know why this frit is so popular. It has a balance of oxides similar to most glazes, so adding it to supply boron does not disrupt the chemistry too much. Okay, I have done the adjustments. The Cone 6 recipe and our adjusted Cone 10 one have the same chemistry. But check this out. The recipe of the adjusted Cone 10 glaze has almost equal parts of the same five materials. Isn't that interesting? That means that chemically the standard Digital Fire 1214M Cone 6 transparent recipe is just our standard 1947U Cone 10 transparent plus 0.2 molar parts of boron and no zinc. The amazing thing is I did not realize this until composing this lesson. But when I opened the original 1947U in Area 1 to compare, you would never know this. They look quite different. So the glaze on the left is the original. The one on the right is our adjustment to make it melt at cone 6. Notice it raises the thermal expansion, but not by much. The more you adjust glaze chemistry to reduce the melting point, the more of a challenge it is to keep expansion and thus crazing down. The main reason is the lower silica and alumina. But again, the low expansion boron is the secret to keeping the expansion down. Notice also that the cost is up. That's expected, since fritz are more expensive. You can tell inside the costs of your individual materials using the materials or the overrides type codes dialogs. So the secret to reducing the firing temperature of a cone 6 glaze is to add boron and leave the rest of the oxide amounts unchanged. There's no way you can do that without ceramic chemistry. The article that we found at the Digital Fire Reference Library a few minutes ago says that sometimes it's better to identify the color, opacification, and variegation mechanisms and then transplant these into a cone 6 base glaze of similar properties to the cone 10 one. That's the end of this lesson.